Hi, welcome to Reading the Word with Luther for March 23rd. I'm Mark Ryman, the pastor at St. Paul's Lutheran Church in Salisbury, North Carolina. And I'd like to read to you today from Isaiah chapter 53. And I'm going to read verses 4 through 6, I believe. I'm reading from the Revised Standard Version. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that made us whole, and with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. This is the word of God. Luther writes about that last verse, specifically the last half of the last verse I read, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all, these words. When man perceives his sins and is completely terror-stricken in his conscience, he must be on his guard that his sins do not remain in his conscience. Just as our sins flow out from a meditation upon the sufferings of Christ and we become conscious of them, so we should pour them again upon him and set our conscience free. Therefore see well to it that you act not like perverted people who bite and devour themselves with their sins in their hearts and run here and there with their good works of their own satisfaction, even work themselves out of this condition by means of indulgences and thus try to rid themselves of their sins, which is impossible. Such false refuge of satisfaction and pilgrimages has spread far and wide. Cast your sins from yourself upon Christ. Believe with a joyful spirit that your sins are his sufferings and wounds, that he carries them and makes satisfaction for them. For if you do not take this course, you will never quiet your heart and secure peace. But you must finally despair in doubt. For if we deal with our sins in our conscience and let them continue within us and cherish them in our hearts, they become much too strong for us to manage and will live forever. But when we see that they are laid on Christ and that he has triumphed over them by his resurrection, and we fearlessly believe it, then they are dead and have become as nothing. In his sufferings Christ made known our sins and crucified them, but by his resurrection he makes us righteous and free from all sin. Now, if you are not able to believe this, you should pray to God for faith. For this is a matter in the hands of God and is bestowed at times knowingly and at times secretly. Now, beseer yourself not to behold Christ's sufferings any longer, but press through all difficulties and behold his friendly heart. How full of love it is towards you, which love constrained him to bear the heavy load of your conscience and of your sin. Thus will your heart be glad and move loving toward him, and the assurance of your faith be strengthened. Don't try to hold it all yourself. Don't try to work yourself into a feeling of being forgiven. Trust Christ's word that you are forgiven. It doesn't take your works. It doesn't take your frenzy. It doesn't take some kind of uh, passion worked up on your part. It doesn't take any doing on your part at all. It takes faith is what it takes. So if you don't have faith to believe that Christ forgives your sin, removes it far from you, lays all of your iniquity upon the Lamb of God, then pray to God as Luther instructs and ask him to give you faith and pray, pray until he does, for he will. Let us pray. We thank you, Lord, for the promise of your word that upon your Lamb, the Christ, Jesus, the iniquity of us all has been laid. Help us not to carry any more what was carried to the cross and is done away from us forever for Christ's sake. Thank you, Jesus, for what you have done. Help us to believe. Amen. Thank you for being with me today for reading the word with Luther. I hope that you'll be back with me again tomorrow.